Tobacco Company, makers of Old Briar Pipe Tobacco, Model Pipe Tobacco, Encore Cigarettes, Sano Cigarettes and Sano Cigars present Martin Kane, Private Eye, starring Lee Tracy. husband was enjoyed. You did enjoy your dinner, didn't you, Miss Carter? Well, what's that, Mrs. Fairchild? I said it was an excellent meal. Oh, oh yes. Uh, have you read this book? Oh. I just got it tonight, from the library on my way home from work. Oh, uh, how did you like your dinner, Mr. Edwards? Mm, well enough. Peas are cold. I wonder where Mr. Miller was tonight. I wonder where Mr. Miller was tonight. He's up in his room. Oh, he isn't sick, is he? I, I said he isn't sick, is he? Mrs. Fairchild, please. Well, I was only asking about Mr. Miller. He wasn't at the table. That was quite obvious. Now, if you don't mind, Miss Carter and I would like to do a little reading. Uh, when are you going on your trip, Mr. Edwards? Soon. Perhaps sooner than I planned. Every day, all that mail you get from all over the world. I understand you always send away for those travel folders, and yet you never go anywhere. That is none of your business. Oh, my goodness. What an excitable man. <laughs> Who's the tray for, Mrs. Lee? Oh, uh, Mr. Miller. He's been up in his room all day, hasn't eaten a single thing. Oh, I'll be glad to take it to him. I can manage, thank you. I wonder what's wrong with Mr. Miller. I know of one good reason why he doesn't want to eat down here. I wish Mr. Miller were downstairs. He's such a nice man. I'm sure we'd have a very pleasant talk. I thought you might like something. Oh, uh, Mrs. Miller, I... I just have to trust you. Well, it is quite all right, Mr. Miller. I'm sorry I came in the way I did. Mrs. Miller, you... Uh, this money is mine. All of it. You mustn't tell anybody. All my life I've saved this money up. And I've... I've kept it here with me. But weren't you afraid that someone might steal it, or you might have, have it stolen, or lose it? Yes. That's why I never put it in the bank. I remembered what happened to my father when I was a boy. <laughs> He had every penny in the bank in our town, and when it failed, he lost everything. Oh, but that couldn't happen today. There are laws to protect people now. You know how much money is here? $75,000. Mr. Miller. I'm not letting anyone take care of it except myself. Oh, no, Mr. Miller, that, that money has to go to the bank. No, I tell you, I'm afraid. Oh, but you've worked too long to have anything happen to that money now. Nothing will. Please, you, you just can't keep it here. Promise me that you take it to the bank the first now, thing now, in the Mr. morning. Please, please, I, I... It's for your own good. The only safe place is in the bank. No, I don't believe it. I don't. But it's true. I saw it with my own eyes. He saved all his life for that money. Oh, what I wouldn't give to have all that money. I'd find someone then, wouldn't I, Mrs. Lee? Someone who'd be interested in me. $75,000. Are you sure, Miss Carter? Mrs. Lee saw it herself. Think what you could do with $75,000. Oh, if only I had it. I'd invest it and make a fortune. Mrs. Fairchild, is this another one of your stories? It's the truth. Mr. Miller has $75,000 hidden in his room. Fantastic. Is it? Think what you could do with $75,000. You wouldn't have to just dream about those faraway places. You'd be able to go to every one of them. Sure, 
sure? I got a paper bag just like it. I got it as soon as you phoned me. Now, look. Nobody in that boarding house is wise to what you're doing, are they? Good, good. Now, the way I figure it, he's probably taking that money to a new hiding place in the morning. That poor sucker's even too cheap to buy a suitcase to move it in. He's got to use a paper bag. Now, listen. Let me know the minute he leaves the house, and I'll take care of everything. Stop worrying, will you? You hired me for this job, and I'll do the job. Okay. You look just the same as... A Wait a minute. Hmm? You mean to tell me you haven't had this busted spring fix yet? Oh, you. Now, Martin, please, the reason I sent for you, dear, is you think... Oh, oh Miss oh. Carter, this is Martin King. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. King? Mrs. Leeds talks about you all the time. How this was the first place you lived in when you first came to New York. You should have seen him when he sat down to one of my meals. His hands were like a windmill reaching for the dishes. I always told you you ought to open a restaurant, Mrs. Leeds. Yes, and you also told me that if I ever needed a favor, call on Martin King. Well, that offer's still open. Now, what's wrong? Well, Martin is one of my boarders, a Mr. Miller. Well? Yesterday I found out that he kept his life savings here in his room. Well, what's he done? Torn up the floorboards to hide it? <laughs> Martin, it was $75,000. Did you... Did you say 75000 I did. <laughs> well, how much rent are you charging these days to get that kind of a customer? Mr. Kane, the money's gone. It was stolen. When did this happen? This morning on the subway. I, I, I accidentally met Mr. Miller, and, and while we were talking, a man took Mr. Miller's shopping bag with the 75000 by mistake. Oh, nice mistake. Oh, I've never seen a man so angry as Mr. Miller. He said he didn't know him, but he was going to find whoever it was that took his money. He said he was going to kill him. That's why I sent for you, Martin. I want you to help Mr. Miller find his money, please, and, and keep him from doing something he'll be sorry for. Sure. Where is he now? Well, I don't know. He hasn't come back. Is there a picture of him in his room? I don't think so. I I'll go look if you want. Please. I I'll be right back. Mrs. Leeds, if I remember rightly, you always knew every single detail of all of your boarders' lives. Now, how come you slipped up on this, uh, 
This fellow Miller. <laughs> 75000 That's a nice, large, fat lump. Well, Martin, he hasn't been here yet. Oh, Martin King, that's a terrible thing to say. Now, how should I know anything about Mr. Miller's affairs? Sure. When are you going to get rid of this phony antique table? Well, when are you going to start doing something about Mr. Miller? Homicide, Lieutenant Gray, please. I'm doing it right now, dear lady. Hello. Lieutenant, this is Marty. Do me a favor, will you? Take a look at Central Reports and see if anybody reported losing $75,000 in the subway. Mm -hmm. That's right, and don't gag about the lost and found department. Okay, I'll hold on. Sure. Say, you, uh, you didn't call the police, did you? Oh, no, you're the only one who's been told. Well, if our friend Miller hasn't called them, we could expect a little trouble. Well, why? Well, it's only human nature. When a man loses as much money as that, he usually goes to the police. And if he doesn't, that means he's going to take matters into his own hands. We can't... Hello, Lieutenant? Yeah? Oh, I see. You gonna be there for a little while? Well, stick around, will you? I'll be right over. Thanks. Well, did, did he call them? No. There's no picture of Mr. Miller in his room. Miss Carter, did you get a good look at this man who took Mr. Miller's money? Uh, I think so. Good. If you'll come down to police headquarters with me, we can start looking at some pictures, you know. It's just possible this man might have had a record. If this fellow Miller shows up around here, Miss Leeds, give me a ring, will you? Shall we go, Miss Carter? I hadn't counted on Miss Carter going through the Rose Gallery like its crooks were all eligible bachelors. I doubt if she'd ever seen that many men in her whole life. But while she dawdled, I also got a further account of what had happened in the subway. The switching of bags pointed up that someone must have tipped off the crook as to how Miller would be carrying the money. The number one objective, though, was to find the bag man and the money. The second objective was to find Miller, a man suffering the shock that he had was liable to perform a desperate act, even against himself. Not having a photograph of him, we had a likeness drawn from descriptions furnished by the people in Mrs. Leeds' house. Now, all we had to do was find him. Charlie, how you feeling? Oh, pretty good, half, except for smoking too much. You know, it's getting me rather worried. I think I'll have to cut down. Cut down on cigarettes or cut down on nicotine? Well, nicotine, I guess, if you want to be literal about it. Well, Charlie, there's a big, there's a big difference there. You know, you don't have to cut down on cigarettes to cut down on nicotine. Uh-uh. Not when you smoke these here, Sano cigarettes. Okay, why don't you try one? Oh, no, half. I've seen a lot of cigarettes claiming less nicotine in the smoke. Well, Charlie, the fact is, Sano cigarettes have less nicotine in the smoke than any leading cigarette. Mm, no, wait a minute. That's so. I want to tell you something. You see, the makers of these Sano cigarettes, they, they don't have to depend upon, you know, extra length and special devices to keep nicotine out of the smoke. They remove the nicotine from the tobacco itself before the cigarette is made so that there's less than 1% nicotine left in the tobacco. So there's bound to be far less in the smoke. Actually, Sano cigarettes have less than one-tenth of one percent nicotine in the smoke. Say, I'm convinced. And say, this Sano cigarette tastes even better than my usual brand. Of course it does. Now look here, Charlie, you stop worrying about nicotine and start smoking Sano's. Okay. Give me a couple of packs. Okay, Charlie. Oh, yeah. Here Is it change, Charlie? Drop by soon again, will you? Thanks, Hap. Bye. Good seeing you. Oh, hi, Hap. Hi, sir. Say, uh, has Marty dropped by yet? No, I haven't seen him. Why, anything go awry? Well, we were looking for a guy who swiped $75,000. Now I just heard we don't have to look. You found him, huh? Oh, yes, yes. With two slugs in his chest. Where does Marty fit in? Well, he was doing a favor for his old landlady. Did you say something about a landlady? I did. Now, look. If Marty comes in, tell him to get over to the Bevins Hotel, room 904, and tell him to hurry. What has the dead guy got to do with the landlady? Oh, do you have to know everything? Hiya, Tom. What can I do for you? Hiya, Hap. I see you carry that big new pouch of model pipe tobacco. You bet I do, Tom. Model and the new larger improved pouch. Say, that's really handsome. And the new improved pouch gives you 50% more tobacco. Sounds great. How much? Just 15 cents. Good deal. 
Thanks, Hap. Thank you, Tom. Not bad, Lieutenant. Not bad at all. Well, Miss Carter kept talking about those two shopping bags. So when the sergeant spotted this one under the bed, he called a long shot and figured that, well, this might be the guy who stole all the money. Well, if it pays off, the sergeant's a bright boy. Say, Marty, uh, you brought Miss Carter along, didn't you? She's right outside. Good. Uh, sergeant, bring her in. Yes, sir. Got any idea who he is? Well, he's got one name on the register downstairs and two more in his wallet. We'll have to send his prince to Washington for a check. In here, please, Miss Carter. Uh, Miss Carter, this is going to be a little rough. You said you wanted to help. Uh, I'll try. All right, if you'll just look at this man's face and tell us if he is the one that you saw take Mr. Miller's bag. Okay? Oh, I, I've never seen a dead person before. We understand. Now, Miss Carter, please. Is this the man? Yes, that's him. He's the one that took the money on the subway. You sure now? It's him, all right. Okay, Miss Carter, that'll be all, and thanks very much for coming here. Are you, are you coming back to the house now, Mr. Kane? In a little while. You'd better go on ahead, huh? All right. I, I didn't know what to expect, him being dead, you understand, but he did it. I'm sure. Well, there's only one thing left, Marty. Yeah? Sure, fine, Mr. Miller. He wasn't satisfied with getting the 75000 back. He had to take a murder rap along with him. Well, you could be right. Well, what's the catch, Marty? On the other hand, he could be wrong. Okay, I'll buy, if you have anything to sell. This doodad I got in my hand here. Our friend wasn't exactly cutting out paper dolls. These are exactly the same size as our legal tender, correct? So far. And we decided that the deceased over there had been tipped off by someone. Someone who knew that Miller was putting that money in a shopping bag. That gave this one just time enough to cut this out and make ready for the old switcheroo. Wait a minute. I see what he's getting at, <laughs> Lieutenant. He's saying that if Miller... Oh, no. Let me have the pleasure, will you, Lieutenant? How in the world can Miller ever find this flea bag, this hideout? Oh, no. Not a chance in the world. Nope. The one who shot that guy was the one who tipped him off. And look what the murderer gained. The whole 75000 Plus the fact there's no one left to identify. Okay, but where's Miller? He hasn't even reported the loss of the money. Why is he playing so hard to get? Well, the only answer that makes <laughs> sense is what I said before. After having all that money taken away from him, he's half out of his mind. And now after what happened here, we've got to find Miller and we've got to find him fast. Because if we don't, he's liable to wind up like that guy. Mr. Edwards. Yes? Please come over to the window. What for? But there's a man across the street looking up here. Where? Over there in that doorway. Why, there's no one there. Are you sure? Well, see for yourself. I'm sure there was a man standing there. Mrs. Fairchild, you're an extraordinary woman. If there's nothing to talk about, you manage to make certain we find something. who took Mr. Miller's money. There he was, right in the middle of the floor. And I had to identify him. I said, yes, that's him. That's the man who did it. Sounds so incredible. Mr. Edwards. Oh, Miss Carter, I didn't say that I didn't believe you. It's just that, uh, well, something like this happening to us, it's, it's a hard thing to get used to. Who's the murderer, Miss Carter? Did Mr. Kane say? No, he didn't. Oh, poor Mr. Miller. All the trouble this money's caused. Well, it served him right. Hoarding all those pennies all these years, you might have expected something like this to happen. Well, you have no right to talk like that. No right at all. Why not? The old miser, he only got what was coming to him. Well, you sound as if you're glad he's lost all his money. Sure. He didn't know what to do with it. If I'd have had it, I'd have spent it by now. I'd have had a good time out of life. Mr. Kane. Hello, Miss Carter. Oh, these are two of my boarders. Martin Kane, Mr. Edwards, and Mrs. Fairchild. Oh, Mr. Kane, have you found the money? Not yet. Oh. Well, you expect to? Oh, yes. Uh, Mrs. Leeds, I'm looking for someone besides Mr. Miller now. But who is it? 
Uh, whoever it is in this house who spied on Mr. Miller, who told the crook all about the money. Martin! You were the first one who saw it. Now, did you tell anyone? Martin, you don't really think it was someone in my house. It has to be. Whoever it was knew that Miller was putting that money in a paper shopping bag. Now, Miss Leeds, please. Whom did you tell? Her. I told her. Well, Miss Carter? I, I wasn't the only one who knew. I told Mrs. Fairchild. Oh? Why are you looking at me? I, 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 I told him about it. He knew about the money, too. Oh, fine. Is that true, sir? I'm afraid it is. Well, that's just great. Now, it's any one of four people. Martin, I'm surprised at you. None of my guests would do a thing like that. It's an absurd idea, Mr. Kane. But we're simple people. We live quiet lives. How could any of us possibly know a thief? Mr. Edwards, when it comes to $75,000, you'd be surprised how people can change. One of us? You frighten me. I I'm afraid to stay here. Me too. Mrs. Leeds, please accept my notice. Oh, ladies, no. Oh, I'm packing my bag right oh, now. Please, please don't go. Wait, wait. I'm coming with you. Now, Martin, you see what you've done. Yes, Mrs. Leeds, but who knows? Maybe I've scared a killer into making a wrong move. So, no money, there's no sign of Miller anywhere. Well, I'm afraid the sergeant's drawing is a little out of line. The people in Mrs. Lee's house couldn't seem to come up with a good enough description. No. Oh, uh, where are you now? I see. Yeah. Hey, okay, I'll call you if we spot him. Right. Hmm. Miller must know about the murder by now. Sure, it's been in all the papers. Yeah. Say. What? I wonder why he hasn't reported to us, huh? Well, I'll... Hey! Just a minute! I heard shots. Miller must have doubled back here after running away. But who would do such a thing? I don't know, but whoever it was, they can stop running now. What do you mean? Mr. Miller may be dead, but he's still going to name his own murderer. <laughs> Men and women who follow the high road to adventure set equally high standards for the products they use in daily living. Such a person is Mr. Grenville Walker, prominent New York socialite, distinguished travel expert, and big game hunter. Before selecting Encore above all other filter cigarettes, Mr. Walker tried the others and found that Encore is the one filter cigarette you can really taste. The secret of Encore's unique taste satisfaction can be found in Encore's improved filter mouthpiece. It provides full filter protection, of course, but it also lets you enjoy the full satisfaction of Encore's truly superb tobaccos. Yes, Encore is the one filter cigarette that filters the smoke, not the taste. So for filtered smoking at its very finest, smoke the filter cigarette whose very name, Encore, suggests the unique taste satisfaction it gives you over and over again. 
Get a pack or two of Encore cigarettes tomorrow. <laughs> Mrs. Leeds is a very smart landlady. She always has an extra key. Get out! <laughs> you must be an optimist. The time has come to add up the score, Mr. Edwards. You have killed two men. I, I found this money, that's all. Sure, in that crook's hotel room after you put two slugs into him. That's what you did there. You see, Mr. Edwards, Mr. Miller has told us all about what you. What are you talking about? He's dead. Absolutely right, but Miller was not his real name. I recognized his face the minute I saw him. He was released a little while ago from federal prison. Prison? Yeah, do you know why he was there, Edwards? Counterfeiting. No, it, it couldn't be. It couldn't be. But it is. All that money, counterfeit, every single sawbuck. Oh, no. That's how we found you. Ever since Miller's death, we've had everyone in this house followed. We knew that sooner or later, one of you would try to spend that money. And when you tried to push a phony 10, we had our killer. I still don't believe it. Didn't you know why Miller kept away from the police? He had to get that money back before they found it. The evidence would send him back to prison. And he knew that he had to find it here in this house. Someone in this house was involved, and that's when you shot him. No, 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 easy, Mr. Edwards. No, no, I don't like Oh, the things I wanted to do. The places I wanted to see. $75,000. The idea of it just drove me crazy. I, I had to have it. You see, I'm getting old. And I wanted a chance to do something before I died. Sure. But everything you did was just like that nice green paper there. Worthless. All right, Mr. Edwards. Let's go. Speaking, reminding you to tune in Martin Kane, Private Eye, starring Lee Tracy at the same time next week. Presented by the makers of Encore Cigarettes and Senno Cigarettes. Private Eye has been selected to be shown to our armed forces overseas.